In this video, we're going to examine the properties of a physical pendulum. A physical pendulum is uh, an extended object that is rotated about some point on the object. I have chosen uh, a whale that is caught by its tail to be the example uh, of the physical pendulum in this video. The red point represents the axis of rotation of the whale, and we can pull the whale back uh, to get it ready to go, and then release it, and as you can see, the whale oscillates back and forth. So the question is, is this motion of the physical pendulum simple harmonic motion or not? And that's what we're going to show uh, right now. So here's the uh, whale in its original position. There's a vertical dotted line and uh, the center of mass of the whale is shown. That's a, an approximation that I just uh, chose. The center of mass um, might not really be exactly there, but it's, it's close enough, I think. So here's the whale. Uh, when it's drawn back a bit, it does not need to be at the maximum amplitude. This is just uh, some other position. And um, you can see that the radius or the, uh, is shown. This is the radius from the axis of rotation to the center of mass and uh, the uh, gravitational force is going to be acting at the center of mass in that case. So to um, determine whether or not we had simple harmonic motion in some of the previous examples, we used uh, the equation F net is equal to mass times acceleration. That's not going to work for us here because uh, as you saw, this physical pendulum is oscillating. And so what we're going to use instead is torque equals I alpha. I'm not going to write it that way, though. I'm going to write it as I alpha equals torque. That will just allow me to avoid some manipulation later on. So the first thing I'm going to do is to replace alpha with d squared theta by dt squared. Um, and then on the right-hand side of the equation, we need to write down what torque is. Well, remember that torque is equal to R F sine theta. We have R. The force is mass times gravity, and I have written in sine theta as well. Now, where is that minus sign coming from? Well, if you look at the angle in the diagram, you can see that theta is a counterclockwise rotation. Meanwhile, the acceleration of the whale is obviously a clockwise one. And so they are in opposite directions. And so we need to have a minus sign to show that the uh, displacement angle and the acceleration are going to have opposite signs. So that's where the minus sign comes from. OK, now remember from uh, calculus that sine theta will be approximately equal to theta for small angles. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, let's assume that this oscillation is going to include only relatively small angles. And we're going to make the substitution that sine theta is approximately equal to theta. And that will allow us to manipulate the equation and get something that looks like the equation, uh, the condition for simple harmonic motion. Now, it looks a little bit different because it involves thetas, but we have d squared theta by dt squared is equal to negative mgr over i times theta, and that looks like the condition for simple harmonic motion, and it is. And now we can determine what omega is. Omega squared is going to be mgr over i, and the period is 2 pi over omega, and so we can determine that the period of oscillation for this physical pendulum is 2 pi times the square root of i over mgr. So that is the physical pendulum. Now, remember the simple pendulum was the very first example I showed um, in, uh, in the first video. And how does that relate to the physical pendulum? 
Well, a simple pendulum involves a point mass that is attached to a string. And you can see that if we draw the diagram of the simple pendulum, it looks an awful lot like the physical pendulum. We still have R drawn from the axis of rotation to the center of mass. We still have the force mg. We still have the angle theta. And so all of the equations we wrote down for the physical pendulum apply to the simple pendulum. The only difference is that now we know what the rotational inertia is. So remember that rotational inertia for a point mass is just mr squared. So we can take i and replace it with mr squared and then simplify that equation and we find that omega squared is equal to g over r. And when we put that into the period equation, we get that the period is 2 pi times the square root of r over g. So let's take a moment to think about what affects the period. If you increase r, making the length of the string longer, you will find that the period increases. In other words, it takes longer for the pendulum to complete uh, a full cycle. You could also find a way to uh, change g. For example, you could go to the moon and you'd have a smaller g on the moon. And in that case, uh, you would increase the period. And then it's worth thinking about what doesn't affect the period. You notice, for example, that m is not represented in that equation, and so changing the mass of the simple pendulum should not affect the period. Um, also, the amplitude does not affect the period. Well, it does affect the motion a little bit, though. Remember, the pendulum, the physical pendulum, uh, showing that the, the motion was simple harmonic motion for the physical pendulum relied on using that approximation that sine theta was approximately equal to theta. And so uh, really what we've done here is we have shown that for small oscillations, um, the motion for both the simple pendulum and the physical pendulum is simple harmonic motion. If you pull the pendulum way back so that you start with a very large angle, then the approximation will not work as well, and it will not truly be simple harmonic motion. Okay, that's it for this video.